Here I have one of the DS18B20 thermal probes directly from eBay, and you'll note that the ends of the wires are just bare metal, so there's no way to actually plug it directly into the Raspberry Pi. In my case, I experimented with a couple configurations. For one of the probes, I just have some bare jumper wires that I stripped the metal off and then twisted onto the ends of the cable without any soldering. And in the other case, I followed the common instruction of having a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor soldered between the signal line and the power line. From everything I've read online, it seems like there's a lot of confusion about the pull-up resistor and whether it's necessary or not. It's worth pointing out that this is what the actual sensor looks like. I did some digging to try and understand this myself, and it seems like a lot of the confusion centers around the one-wire protocol that this chip uses. As mentioned before, the DS18B20 is actually a really small chip inside of a transistor-like package. There's actually a lot going on inside that chip, including a complicated communication protocol. When evaluating if the pull-up resistor is necessary or not, there's really two things to consider here. One is the default voltage level of the signal line, and the other is the ability to power the device. The whole idea behind the one-wire protocol is that supposedly you're able to both power and communicate with the device using the same signal line. This way you can both communicate with and power the device using only one wire, but of course you need a ground as well. Here I'm going to show the operation of the sensor in several different configurations. Right now I only have two wires connected, the ground and GPIO pin 14. For this configuration I have the pull-up resistor soldered between the signal and the power. And right now on the Raspberry Pi I have GPIO pin 14 not configured to be a pull-up resistor. The power going into the chip and the ground is zero and there are no sensors detected. Now if I run this Python script which will cause GPIO pin 14 to become a pull-up resistor to pull it up to 3.3 volts, you can see that the sensor now is detected and now you can see that the voltage between ground and the power is 3 volts. It looks like this is too low for the sensor to actually work because it always reports 85 degrees, which is wrong. And if I hold it, it never changes. Okay, now I've rebooted the Pi and the sensor is working out of the box because I have the 3.3 volt connected to the power uh, and I've still got that pull-up resistor. But what's happening now is the default state of the signal line is 3.3 volts because the power is pulling it up to 3.3 volts whereas before it was just getting set to nothing until I enabled the pull up inside the Raspberry Pi on the GPIO pin 14. So in this case I don't need to run any software configurations to set the GPIO pin 14 to have a pull up resistor. Okay so in the third case I'm trying this without any pull up resistor at all. So I just have the bare wires going directly into the 3.3 volt GPIO pin 14 and the ground. And you can see the voltage between the power and ground is 3.28 volts, about where it should be. If I read out which one wire devices are available, I'm getting these kind of like weird devices that don't have real system IDs, and if I check in there, there's actually no temperature readings. So in this case, it's not working. I think I can say the reason why is because the sensor is getting the power, but because we don't have a pull-up on the signal line, the one-wire protocol isn't working. So it's getting some sort of partial IDs and uh, failing at the communication protocol. And if you watch it a while longer, you'll see that there's these new IDs that pop up uh, that are also nonsense, probably just uh, an example of bad communication since we're not using the right protocol. Now if I run this script to set GPIO pin 14 to have a pull-up, so its default state is 3.3 volts, watch what happens. And there we go, that real looking ID, that is our sensor. So hopefully that clears things up a little bit. As a summary, we need two things to be true. We need the device to be powered, which is possible through the signal cable, 
since the default state of the one wire protocol is for the voltage to be high, which apparently charges some sort of internal capacitor inside the chip. And the second thing you need is for the data line to be high when idle. You can achieve this with either an internal or an external pull-up resistor. If you decide to take advantage of the one wire protocol and only use two wires for your setup, you're going to need to make sure that your device is adequately powered. If you're a software person and you can't be bothered to actually solder down the extra resistor, you can make this work without an external pull-up resistor, but that means you'll have to use software control inside the Raspberry Pi. If you do decide to use the built-in pull-up resistor, it's a good idea to probe the GPIO pin with respect to ground just to make sure that it's actually doing what you think it's doing with respect to voltage. And let's run this script to set it into pull-up mode. Now the default voltage level of this pin, GPIO pin 14, is 3.1 volts with respect to ground. Okay, let's do some setup steps now that you have your thermal probe wired up to the Raspberry Pi. And just to review, in my case I have the power, which is the red cable on the 3.3 volt pin, the yellow on GPIO pin 14, which is the signal, and the ground, which is the black wire on the ground pin on the Raspberry Pi. So first, you need to edit the boot configuration. And go to the bottom of the file and add this. So this part here is just saying, when you boot up the computer, add this one wire overlay, which is that one wire protocol we discussed before. And this second part is only necessary to identify the pin in my case, I chose to use GPIO pin 14, just to be different. I think if you don't specify this, it chooses GPIO pin 4 by default. Now let's save and exit, and reboot the Pi. In my case, I've chosen to show the steps for configuring your probe using the 3.3 volt ground and the signal cable. So this is not the true one wire configuration. I've chosen to show it this way because this way you can avoid having the 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. Many of you probably don't have this spare resistor kicking around, and if you do, you probably don't want to bother soldering it since it's not fundamentally necessary. In the true one wire configuration, you can get away with using one wire, well, two actually, including the ground. Using this particular wiring on the sensor and the Raspberry Pi, you first need to set the GPIO pin 14 into the pull-up mode. I've tested this code before, and I can verify that it sets the GPIO pin 14 into pull-up mode. Let's run this. Alright, the sensor should be in pull-up mode. Alright, let's check if the sensor is detected and working now. It is located at sys bus w1 and devices and that 2803 ID number looking thing. And in this directory, there's a file called w1slave. And this value here is our temperature reading. So if we read that again, it changes slightly each time. And if we just read this on a loop, and if I put my hand around the sensor, you can see that the value starts going up. Now if you've looked at a few guides on the internet, you might have seen people run the following commands, mod probe w1 therm and mod probe w1 gpio. I haven't verified, but I assume these are in fact necessary. The mod probe command will turn on a kernel module if it wasn't already on, but in my case, if I do ls mod and grep for W1, I can assure you that when I first booted up the Pi, these two modules were already enabled. Depending on your version of the Raspberry Pi operating system, these two kernel modules may already be active and available, so doing mod probe doesn't accomplish anything for you. If you're unsure, just do ls mod grep and then the module name. Something worth mentioning is that if you do find that you need to use mod probe to enable the kernel module, this will only survive until the next reboot. If you want to make it permanent, you'll have to add the kernel module name into etc and modules. 
After doing a bit of digging, it looks like in my case, these two kernel modules are already baked into the kernel. Now that you're sure you can read from the thermal probe, all you need to do is parse out this value and do something with it. I'll provide a link in the description to a utility function that does this for you. I highly recommend doing a skim over of the OneWire protocol in Wikipedia. It describes in detail how the OneWire protocol works, how information is transmitted. It also discusses how the default state of the bus is high. I also recommend checking out the datasheet for this circuit. Looking at the circuit diagram resolves the mystery about how the chip can power itself only on the data line. This capacitor inside the chip temporarily stores energy from when the bus line was high. This way the chip can still power itself even when the signal goes low. The sensors that I bought were from eBay. You can find them by searching for DS18B20. The waterproof packaging that you see in other listings is just a more convenient form of purchasing this device. If you do want to use a pull-up resistor but you don't want to bother with soldering, you can buy this terminal block. Given the price, I don't really think it's worth it, especially since you can use software to control the internal pull-up resistor on the Raspberry Pi. You can do something similar on Arduino too. Well, that covers just about everything I wanted to say about this sensor. If you want to make use of any of the code samples or commands that I used in this video, see the link in the description. At this link, I also described some of the further experiments I did trying to get the parasite power mode to work. Ultimately, I was unsuccessful, but you could read more at the link.